So CD Projekt Red tweeted the other day, Our menstrual leave initiative which we implemented this April was recently awarded by 30% Club Poland. We're honored to be recognized alongside other industry leaders working to increase diversity and inclusion. CD Projekt Red was chosen for the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Award for our work in promoting acceptance of biological differences and for creating a flexible work environment. Thank you 30% Club Poland for recognizing our efforts. We hope to continue developing our diversity, equity and inclusion strategies and inspiring others to do the same. First the fuck of all, imagine bragging about a diversity, equity and inclusion award. Like how fucking pathetic is that? That's like bragging about winning a participation trophy. Second, I can understand working from home during the administration period, but paid time off? Get the fuck out of here. You mean to tell me these bitches out here in CD Projekt Red get a whole paid week off per month? Imagine there are two candidates applying for a job, a man and a woman. Both have the same skills and exactly the same salary requirements. Which one would you hire knowing that one of them will work 7 to 10 days less per month than the other? My wife always tells me during her period, I hope you're a girl in your next life. You know what, after reading this, I might re consider my answer on that one. I know men want to transition after hearing this. Actually men, I'm here to tell you, you don't need to transition. Because as the lefties would say, men can have periods too. Speaking of transitioning, Grace Hopper Tech Fair overrun by men identifying as women or non-binary. The Grace Hopper Tech Conference is an annual women's only tech conference that is designed to bring quote unquote research and career interests of women in computing to the forefront. The conference is named after computer scientist, mathematician, and naval commander Grace Hopper. Prices for this four-day tech conference range from $650 for students and $1,300 for non-students. This particular year, the organization that runs the conference, AnitaB.org, decided to make this event inclusive to non-binary people. And they realized they fucked up the day of the event when there's an increase of participation of self-identifying males and were unable to ban them from attending due to federal non-discrimination laws in the United States. Career conference for females in tech was taken over by male attendees. They were there just purely for the career fair. Social media clips filmed at the Grace Hopper, the world's largest gathering of women technologists, show men standing in line to meet with recruiters. This is a space for women in tech. This is one of those few limited resources that isn't for you, it's for us. Some of the male attendees reportedly lied about being non-binary just to get in. But it's interesting that the large majority of the people that actually ended up in the event had name tags with he, him and have no searchable history of identifying as non-binary. Several tech workers defended the men for trying to capitalize on job opportunities not meant for them, seeing that the entire concept was wrong. Let's be honest, there is no need for a conference just for women because if it was the opposite for men, then it would be sexist. Just because you are a woman doesn't give you the right to talk to a big firm recruiter. Guys work just as hard and they don't get that chance. It's not. It's not a loss for women. It is, however, just a, another victory for men. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> we did it again. So let me get this straight. The idea is that biological men have an advantage over biological women when it comes to sourcing a STEM job. So you cr guys create women specific opportunities to account for this and then decide to let biologically born non-binary men attend? Like my nigga in Christ, make it make sense. Just make a separate tech event for queer and non-binary people. The president of the advisory at AnitaB.org has stated, This year, I must admit, I didn't feel this way. And I know many of you felt the same. Many of you are feeling unsafe physically and psychologically, and you are feeling unheard. We tried to create a safe space, and this week we saw the outside world creep in. This makes me angry and it makes me sad, but mostly it makes me want to fight. Oh no, our Themyscira has been violated by the presence of men. We must fight back. It's not that deep, Wonder Woman woman relax. One woman tweeted, they should be banned. I don't understand why women can't have places just for women. Baby doll, that ship sailed the moment feminism made boy scouts accept girls even though girls have their own scouts. Well the boy scout motto is be prepared but scout leaders may not have been totally prepared for how angry the girl scouts would be over this move. For others though, this is an opportunity they've been waiting for. Like all good boy scouts, Sydney Ireland is friendly, courteous and cheerful. What she is not is a boy, which has been a problem until now. It's so surreal to me uh, to now have the Boy Scouts open up their doors to everybody 
The unanimous decision by the Boy Scouts of America means starting next year, girls will be able to join Cub Scouts and in 2019, Boy Scouts. But it still won't be co-ed. There will be girl-only dens and troops with the same programs as the boys and the same chance to achieve scouting's highest honor, Eagle Scout. The Boy Scouts say the move is in response to changing times. What we know about families today is they have a limited amount of time, and we've had tremendous demand from our parents that have boys in Cub Scouting to open up that opportunity for young women. Men's spaces get violated by women all the time, and we have to take that to the chin. Women spend decades making sure men can't have male-only spaces, so the precedent is already set. Any attempt to control access based on gender will be countered using the very same methods one gender devised against another. Gyms back in the day used to be a men's only space until women fucked that up. Now some men won't even go to the gym because they are afraid to be a main subject of a TikTok of some mid-six clout chasing wannabe gym rat claiming that he's a creep for briefly looking her way. This is what happens when you listen to white liberal women. They're the ones causing these pronoun TQIA plus modern women problems we're experiencing. Think about it, almost every outrageous tweet or post about pronouns, neo-pronouns, having fake disorders, pro-grooming children, were made and accepted into society by a white liberal woman. If you took away every white liberal woman's access to the internet, you can bet your sweet ass and half a tid the world will start healing. Let me know what you think about both situations in the comments below. I would love to hear and interact with you. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been your boy, Mr. Gaming Flex. And remember, calling yourself non-binary categorizes everybody into a binary or a non-binary, creating a binary system which makes you binary again. Until next time.